of different production roles, such as graphics, camera, and audio. You're watching Rogers TV. Welcome to a new episode of Next Week Today on St. Thomas Elgin. We're glad to have you. Today, we are joined by Councillor Steve Wookie. You may know him as Councillor Steve Wookie, but I know him as Mr. Wookie from Central Elgin. Welcome to the show, Councillor Wookie. Thanks, Wookie. Kate. Good seeing you again. It's great to be here. Great to see you as well. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about who Mr. Wookie or Steve Wookie is. Uh, it's, well, uh, born and raised in St. Thomas. Um, <laughs> Uh, my dad was a police officer, my mom worked at the hospital, I grew up in the, over by the hospital there. Went to Elgin Court, Homedale Central, went to Western. I always wanted to be a lawyer, and, but uh, when I got to close to the end of university, I realized I didn't want to spend four more years in university, right? <laughs> and, uh, and, and I went to see my old high school history teacher and we had a chat one day and uh, I thought that's what I want to do. So that's a little bit about me. I'm, I'm happily married to my wife, Brita and we've got two great kids, and um, I'm just living the life as a retired teacher. It's uh, fantastic. Wonderful, and congratulations on your recent election to City Council. Thank you very much. What it's good to be you, back. Yeah, well, glad to have you back. What made you run for City Council in the first place? Well, when I was a kid, like, I liked politics and history and all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. even when I was a kid. So, like, when people say why, I'm like, it's like asking somebody why they quilt, <laughs> uh, why, they do, why they paint, why they rebuild engines. I just always liked that stuff as a kid, and I was, and um, where people build things, for me it was, it, it was cool because when you understand history and economics and politics and international relations, you kind of can piece things together about what's going on in the world. And from a very young age, I was very into that. And I always kind of thought I'd run for politics, but then what happens is, as you know, you uh, start a career, uh, you have a family, you're busy, 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 busy. And it wasn't until really 2013 that I was sitting around and, you know, as a parent, like, you're always busy, but then eventually your kids stop talking to you. Right? So my, you know, they, and it was like two hours, and I'm like, wait a second, nobody's talked to me for two hours. I could, I think I want to run for city council. You know what I mean? So it's something I always wanted to do, and I always thought I'd do it after I retired. But um, it worked out that I did it when I had, you know, four or five years left to teach. So that's kind of why I did it and how it happened. Incredible. So you went from teaching it to doing it. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and it was kind of fun at the same time, because I was teaching civics. Mm -hmm. Like, I was teaching a civics class while I was on city council. Incredible. So it was kind of handy, because you could talk about what actually is going on like yeah. in a very real and, and I taught law and philosophy and history and a lot of other kind of stuff so it was very relatable amazing yeah. now we've we've started the post questionnaire with yeah, sure. um, Councillor Baldwin Sands last, last episode so starting off with you what is your idea of perfect happiness well I traded in happiness about 30 years ago for peace of mind right mm -hmm. like, so happiness like uh, I I probably think about this stuff too much but happiness is just a little blip right Mm -hmm. And for me, that, ch that chasing happiness is, is kind of futile because, you know, it's not like you can maintain that level and so all those things. So peace of mind is, and contentment and all those kind of things are what really drive me. And uh, I, when I think about this, I think about it gets kind of Buddhist in a sense of oneness and, and, and all those kind of things. So when I think of perfect happiness, I think about being outside uh, in nature, doing something active and being with people I care about. Mm -hmm. and, and really, that's, that's really when I'm happiest. That sounds right? incredible. Yeah, incredible. And, uh, and, it's, um, and it's doable, right? Mm -hmm. It's not chasing a dream. You can just sit on my picnic table in the backyard and do that and you know, watch the birds and listen to the trees. <laughs> so true. Yeah. Now, which talent would you most like to have? I, I desperately would have loved to have been a, like a, a writer, a novelist. Mm -hmm. Like, I love reading. And when I read a good novel, I'm like, wow, that is just so awesome, yeah. right? But, but anything, like any kind of thing expressive like that, like uh, musical lyrics, um, art. Uh, I mean, I taught a lot of art history, but, you know, I'm the guy that we, we applaud C pluses in our family for art, art you know, class, <laughs> right? Like, but anything that's in that kind of creative building genre that somebody can look at it and say, this is what's going to look like in the end, I really wish I had that. But when I read novels, I'm like, wow, I'd love to do that. Incredible. Yeah. And our last one, which living person do you most admire? Well, um, it's a person nobody that's watching this probably knows, but it's my brother-in-law, Greg. Oh. And my brother-in-law, Greg, um, 
for several different reasons. He's always been very committed to his community. He sees beyond like what's going on right now, and, and he's compassionate and caring, and uh, and he's and he's been through a lot and in his life, and so he's a real inspiration. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, when I think about what kind of person I want to be and I want my kids to be like, I think about my brother-in-law, Greg. He, he, and he's um, fr from Raventown, he's Delaware the town. So he was the, on band council, he was a chief, but you know, he cares so much and he's so compassionate. Mm -hmm. And that's why I admire him the most. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, Steve, it's still weird to say Steve. You can say, you have to call me Steve, it's weird. <laughs> it's so weird. But thanks so much for being with us today. We thanks, really appreciate Kate. it. Good seeing you. And you know, I want you to know that you are not that much of a problem as a, as a student. You oh, know? my goodness. Like, uh, you had to kick you out once in a while, but I'm, I'm glad you came around. <laughs> Probably from chatting too much, right? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Thanks so much. Okay, thank you. We'll be right back on Next Week Today in St. Thomas Elgin. action on Rogers TV. Tuesday. It turns out that it was the cats that got to the nest. We want people to understand the plight of Canadian wildlife. It's not getting better. Healed, released, free on Rogers TV. Behold Emily Carr, painter, about to encounter the force that will consume her life. They sealed their secrets from me, humble and pleading before the great trees, awaiting the invitation from the spirit to come meet me halfway. Nothing is still now, everything is alive. At last, I knew I must see through the eye of the totem itself, the mythic eye of the forest. Seldom able to live by her brush, before she died in 1945, Emily Carr was in the first rank of Canadian painters. This is my country. What I want to express is here and I love it. Amen. Welcome back to Next Week Today in St. Thomas, Elgin. We are now here with Melody Salisbury, owner of Game Over Baby. Welcome to the show, Melody. Thanks for having me. Can you tell us a little bit about Game Over Baby? Absolutely. Um, well, I was working in retail. As you know, it's a very busy industry. And after having my two kids, I didn't want to do it anymore. I wanted mm -hmm. to stay home with my kids. So I was thinking, what can I do to bring in an income while being home? So the idea popped into my head um, with custom apparel. We started with onesies. It was game over baby, so it was geeky baby clothes for kids, because you didn't see that. You know, my husband's like an avid Star Wars fan and a, and a video game, like he's a gamer. There was nothing like that for babies out there. So we started with game over baby. It was just onesie, onesies, and from there, it's really grown. Incredible, and what year yeah. did you start game 2015. over baby? 2015. Great, yeah. so how old are your boys that inspired Now us? they're eight and 10. <laughs> Wow. So it's been a journey. Great. Yeah. So you started off with onesies and what do you offer now? Now we offer a lot of customized items um, like that personalized item. People want that. We offer mm -hmm. things for businesses, business polos, golf shirts. It's really grown for the business product. Um, but people still love their custom apparel. You know, they want to celebrate a one year old's birthday mm -hmm. with apparel for the whole family. It's not just the little onesie anymore. It's Mom wants something, dad wants something, the brother needs something, right? And like going to Disney, they need mm -hmm. shirts to go to Disney. Like it's, it's an event now to, for the custom apparel business. And gifting, gifting has really grown. Um, so we're kind of gifts, promotional items, and apparel is our main three. Wonderful, and yeah. so what's lead time like if you're planning to go to Disney for March break or yeah. um, the um, summer? Pretty quick, we're like, if you message, us on our website, we're less than two weeks, we can get it done for you. I have a helper now that I hired, so we get stuff out really quick and everything's done in house. So we don't really outsource anything, which allows us to get it done quicker too. Great, and you're St. Thomas based? Yes. Great, and tell us a little bit about yourself and your yeah. journey to come into St. Thomas. 
Yeah, we actually moved here five years ago from Pickering. So we moved from the GTA, as you've seen many people move here, and we just fell in love with this community. Um, and comparing it to where we were, I didn't have the support that I had for the local community. Um, I've really grown my brand here. It's so nice when you're on a Facebook page and someone recommends your business and I'm looking for this, oh, game over baby. And it's just like, oh, I feel so amazing when, when like 10 people are commenting on that. So. Yeah, we love it here. My boys go to school here. They're both in hockey, soccer, basketball. So it's busy. No kidding. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's a great community and we're very happy here. Great. Now, if people are looking to find your products, where yes. are the best places to go to find them? Gameoverbaby.com. And also we're on Facebook. So if you just search Game Over Baby on Facebook, we come up, a logo is very recognizable and we will get back to you if you message us within 24 hours. Great, and you said two, two weeks lead, lead time. Yeah. Um, and what are some products that are available on the website for people? Uh, right now we have our Mom Life apparel, so which is like super soft, comfy hoodies with a basic design, you know, because the moms, they want to dress down. They're busy, we have hoodies, t-shirts, uh, we do have our Easter baskets and bunnies. Pink shirt day's coming up February 22nd, so, mm -hmm. and we're donating to Victim Services Elgin for that. So there's lots of different things. We're trying to give an assortment um, and variety so people can choose. Great. I know being a mom, there are so many t-shirt days at school. Yes. Are, are a fellow moms able to reach out to you for those t-shirt days? Absolutely. We do orange shirt day, pink shirt day, and we don't just take the profits, we donate back. That's huge. Yeah, absolutely. Great. So yeah. people can find you on your website and our social media? Facebook and Instagram. Great. Yep. Well, thanks so much Thank for being on so the show much. today, Melody. We really appreciate you coming out. Thanks for having me. Great. We'll be right back with our next guest on Next Week Today in St. Thomas, Elgin. I have here just a common compass. I have some flagging tape on it that's bright orange just in case I drop it. It's easy to find. So with compasses you do have to hold them straight out in your palm nice and flat. And then this part is the one that moves around and it has the degrees on it. So 0 to 360 degrees. And it has north, south, east and west on the sides but it moves and that's because you want to line up this red arrow with the red arrow that's actually pointing to north. So if I have this red arrow, it's actually pointing uh, to the east. So I want to move it around to point north and that'll give me the correct way and how to tell the degrees. So at the beginning of your hike, maybe just when you get to the trail, take out your compass and take note of where you are in what direction and then as you hike along maybe keep it in the back of your mind of which which direction you are going and everything like that so if you do become lost you can use a compass to hopefully find your way out it's packed to the rafters in the edmonton arena Everyone is feeling the pressure on the grabs as they await the American champs. Here's the Cleveland favorite nits now, and boy, do they look impressive. Look at their uniform. I bet you could sure run in smart shirts like those. Not that. Look, world champs my eye. Grads, we don't play for glory. We play the game for the game's sake. So tonight, you're going to earn that title by playing your game. Teamwork, passing. Let's show them what it means to play the grads. champions for 25 years. The record of 502 wins and only 20 losses is unmatched in all of sport. Think it's okay to drive high? Think again. Drug impaired driving is as illegal as drunk driving and in Ontario the penalties are the same. If police suspect you're driving under the influence of drugs of any kind or a combination of drugs and alcohol and you fail a roadside test, your license will be suspended immediately for up to 30 days. You'll pay a penalty of $198. And you can be charged with a criminal offense of impaired driving the same as alcohol. Driving high is never okay.
welcome back to Next Week Today in St. Thomas Elgin. We are now joined by Sharon Lechner, the coordinator of the St. Thomas Elgin Home Show. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Kate. Tell us a little bit about the St. Thomas Elgin Home Show. Well, the Home Show has uh, been around for many years. Apparently it started around 2000 mm. and it was hosted in different locations around the city at the old Hayes Dana plant. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently there was a building across from the Joe Thornton Community Center that Van Peltz owned and they also told me someplace near Highway 3. So it's been at least uh, three different locations and it's been at the uh, Joe Thornton Community Center. We're now in our 12th year there. Wonderful. And when is the St. Thomas Home Show for 2023? So this year the show is going to be from March 24th until the 26th. So the Friday night the show runs from 5 till 9, Saturday is from 10 till 8, and Sunday is from 11 till 5. Great. And what's the cost for people to come and check out the show? Right. It's uh, $10 for adults and uh, children under 12 are free. Wonderful. And uh, what kind of vendors and booths will be at the show for this year? Yeah, we've got a really good array of all kinds of um, anything related to homes and home renovations, home builders. So we've got several different home builders who will be there, uh, including one of our sponsors is Hey Ho Homes, Royal Bank, uh, people talking about windows, floor covering, lighting, and uh, even some furniture stores. We've got the Mennonite Furniture Gallery from Elmer and uh, Gear Lakes Home Hardware Gallery in St. Thomas. Wonderful. And who helps to put on the home show? Well, it's actually uh, put on by the St. Thomas Elgin Home Builders Association. Great, and, and so they're the force that put together the show and bring it to Yeah, to we committee. have a committee that meets regularly that uh, talks about different aspects of what we can do to make it better than last year. Uh, for instance, this year we've got a, a new feature called How To Sessions in the Doug mm. Terry Room. So throughout the show, uh, I guess starting on the Saturday and on the Sunday, you can go in there and um, learn how to plant your spring garden or what what sort of factors you would keep in mind and uh, putting flooring in a new home, what like type of flooring goes best in each room in your house, that kind of thing, or how to finance a home. Mm. All kinds of stuff. Oh, that's really great. Yeah. And um, where can people find the schedule for those uh, sessions? Yeah, our website is St. Uh, St. Thomas Home Show org. So uh, the schedule will be posted. It's not up there yet, but the vendors are all on there, our sponsors, the times for the show, that kind of thing. Great. And um, if people want to find out more information, it's all on the website. Yeah, or they can contact me, uh, home, uh, St. Thomas Home Show at 25percentmore.com okay. if they have any questions. I'm happy to answer those. Great. And any social media as well? Yes, at both St. Thomas Home Show for Facebook and Instagram. Great. And anybody who's coming with kids, any options there or um, vendors that might be good for the kids? We're hoping to get a fudge store, <laughs> um, that kind of thing. But yeah, there, there's also going to be in the Doug Terry room, uh, Peter Inch is bringing in a, a curling demonstration. It's oh. a portable curl, and that's a, a fun thing for, for families to do for free as well. Great, and are some of the other vendors bringing some interesting aspects as well? Yeah, I, I mean, there's gonna, every year we're hoping to have a hot tub display, stuff like oh. that. Um, we're going to have also a shuttle that takes people from Gear Lakes Home Hardware to the show because we think the, the parking's going to be a little bit uh, challenging. So a free shuttle will run both days from 11 till 4. And uh, again, as we've done in previous years, we have what they call whistle stops. Mm -hmm. So some of the vendors will be identified as whistle stops. And so you can go to their booth, fill out a free uh, ballot and be eligible to win all kinds of great prizes. Ooh, what are some of those prizes? Well, we're in the process of confirming them, but last year we had some great uh, electronics, a couple of iPads, and I think an outdoor fireplace, all kinds of stuff. Great, and will they get the whistle stop uh, passport, if you will, when they enter? Yeah, or? when they come in, they'll have a map of mm -hmm. where all the different vendors are, and the ones that are whistle stops will be identified, and those those booths will have the, uh, the free ballot forms for people to complete. Great, so uh, as we wrap up, where can people find you once again um, if they're looking to come out? Uh, stthomashomeshow.org. Great, thanks so much, Sharon. We really appreciate you being on the show. Thanks for having me. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. My name's Ranger M, and I work at Catfish Creek Conservation Authority. I'm the community outreach technician, and that means I do a lot of this. Chatting about all things nature and conservation with kids, adults, teachers, everyone. I love to knowledge share, and that's just what I'm going to do with you. So come on, let's go learn with Ranger M. My dad was a railway porter. It was just about the only job a black man could get. 
but he had big plans for us. <gasps> Music would be our ticket out of poverty. I knew we couldn't afford that piano, so I practiced twice as hard. Nice, Daisy. Okay, Oscar, let's hear it. Turns out, I wasn't half bad. Then I found jazz, or it found me. It wasn't all easy, though. I faced a lot of hate, but I found my stage. They call me the man with four hands. Well, I don't know about that, but let's see how far this ticket takes me. From Montreal to Carnegie Hall and far beyond, Oscar Peterson became one of the most recorded and celebrated jazz musicians of all time. on Next Week Today in St. Thomas Elgin with our final guest today, Sherry Howard, Educational Coordinator for the St. Thomas Elgin Public Arts Centre. Welcome to the show, Sherry. Thanks very much, Kate. What does your role here at the Public Arts Centre entail? Well, a lot of what I do has to do with education. I oversee all of the programs that go on here. Um, I do some teaching here as well. So along with hiring instructors, I also get to teach some of the classes that we offer here to children. Um, I also do a lot of the free programs that we offer here where we invite schools to come, teachers and their students to come. They have a tour of the main space, a hands-on activity in the studio. Um, because we're a small organization, I also help up with fundraising and those kind of things as well. Oh, amazing. And uh, some of those programs, we have March break coming up. Uh, yeah. Do you offer any services for March break or yes. programming? Yes, we have workshops that will run throughout all of March break. So that's um, full day workshops. People can sign up for the full week. They can sign up for one day if they just want to try it out or have other plans for March break. Um, the classes, they're organized around a general theme, which might be an artist or a certain art movement. Um, but our focus here with all of our programs is really on creativity. And so with children, this is great because there's so much creativity already there. Their imaginations are big. Mm -hmm. um, so we focus on creativity and then we also focus on having children enjoy the process of creating. And sometimes it's delaying a bit of the instant gratification. So they start a project in the morning, then they might work on it again in the afternoon and then finish it up mm -hmm. at the end of the day. So they get to kind of enjoy the process of coming back to something and the success they feel when they complete something. Incredible. And you mentioned themes and art movement. So what's right. the difference between a theme and an art movement? So for an art movement, we would have a day where we would look at abstract art. So we might touch on a couple different artists and then we'd have activities that kind of build on creating abstract art. Um, then we have some that are based around Animals and Creatures is another one. So any of the activities they do would link back to animals and creatures. Um, there are other days that are based solely on one artist. So you could come and learn about um, Dali or Picasso mm -hmm. on those days. There's a little bit of art history with those ones as well. Uh, kids come, they also play games. We have lots of games that kids play too. Um, so lots of different things that we do. Great. And typically, how many kids do you have come out, and are they different age brackets? So for the March break classes, it is kids that are junior kindergarten to grade four. Um, the maximum for our classes is 10 students in a class. So there's lots of room for kids to get um, the one-on-one -on -one if mm -hmm. they have questions. Um, also, they get to meet other people when they're here. It's nice having the classes small, so there would be an instructor, an assistant, and then wonderful volunteers for the high schools as well. Oh, incredible. So you have high school students that volunteer in, in the March break camp as well. Absolutely. So the Art Center is a great place to get your volunteer community hours in mm -hmm. if, um, if students are looking to do that, if they enjoy working with children. Uh, you could come and volunteer for all of March break and, and get those hours in. That's great. So you've got a great tie-in there with the schools and the high schools. Uh, are there other opportunities for um, the high school students to volunteer outside the March break? Absolutely. 
So volunteers can kind of look at all the different things that we offer. Some want to work with our children's program. Others want to be involved in other events that go on here. They may volunteer at an opening reception or for fundraising, things like mm -hmm. that. Um, if there's something specific that they want to do, they just need to talk to us about it. And usually there's something going on that fits what they're looking for. Oh, amazing. Now, um, outside of March break, are, are there other events and programs that you offer and work with the schools on? Absolutely. So we have a great partnership with the Thames Valley Board and the London District Catholic School Board. And we have teachers that bring their students here throughout the year. Um, we offer tours of the exhibition. So this changes based on what's being exhibited in the space. Part of the tour is also a hands-on portion mm -hmm. where kids go up to the studio and they create their own piece of art. So those are always fun when we have students come in. Um, it's great to see their reaction to the artwork. Um, I always learn just as much from the kids and the questions they ask. So it's really nice to have them in there. Great energy when they come in here as well. Mm -hmm. And typically what grade do they come um, as part of their school curriculum? We offer tours for all of the grades. So we have kids that are um, as young as kindergarten, grade one that come, um, and then all the way through grade school, and then some high school groups that come as well. Oh, incredible. And do you also offer PA day camps as well? Absolutely. So we, um, in addition to the weekend classes that we run, we also have full day programs that run for the PA days. And again, this is a chance for kids to come and spend a whole day being creative and working on projects. So it's a real space for children to come and be creative and learn how to be creative. Absolutely, absolutely. And like I said, it's, it's easier sometimes with kids because they have all these ideas. So this is just a way of introducing a lesson. But the interesting thing is you introduce a lesson and you would end up with 10 different results based on who the child is, what they bring to the lesson, um, how much they want to explore the different materials that we're using. So it's always so fun to see what they come up with mm -hmm. based on their choices of color or how they're drawing lines or just different things like that. Incredible. So if parents are interested in getting their kids involved here at the Arts Center, how do they get a hold of you? Um, well, there's lots of ways they can do it. We have a website they can go to that will tell them about all the programs being offered. They can call the Art Center as well. Um, it's always great too just to drop in mm -hmm. and check out what's in the space and there's a newsletter you can pick up. Great. And if teachers are interested as well in getting their class here, how do they reach out? Um, they can contact me here at the Art Center and again all those different ways will work but they can email me directly and then we'll book a time that works for them and have their students in. Wonderful. Well, thanks so much for joining us today, Sherry. And I know my little guy will be definitely joining you once again. We would love to have him back. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. And that wraps up our show today for Next Week Today in St. Thomas Elgin. Thanks so much for joining us. Until next time, take care. Rogers TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media. Hi, I'm Melissa Yee, Community Engagement Specialist at Rogers TV. Volunteering at Rogers TV during my high school years provided a great opportunity for me to learn on-air reporting and writing, which helped me get into the college I wanted with that experience. The skills I learned while volunteering at Rogers TV were invaluable, and it has now led me down my career path of now overseeing the volunteer program at Rogers TV.
You're watching Rogers TV 